For the first time, some of the sea's most exotic, fragile and tiny marine creatures are being housed in the Australian Antarctic Division's research aquarium. Krill expert Rob King is with the AAD and joins us now from Hobart. A very good morning to you, Rob. Uh, first of all, uh, this is exciting. This is happening for the first time. Let, let's, uh, let's sort of figure out, though, just what actually is krill? Well, krill are Antarctic crustaceans, and most people know them as the food of the great whales. But in the Southern Ocean, they really support the whole of that Southern Ocean ecosystem to a large degree. Most of that big megafauna, penguins, seals, uh, fish, seabirds, all rely on krill being there in vast numbers to support them at some time in their breeding cycle. So really important part of the ecosystem down there. How come this is the first time that we've got some <laughs> in an aquarium to research? Well, well, what's happened that's different is that we've actually been catching krill for the last 30, 40 years and doing research on them. But we've been catching them with trawl nets, which is the traditional way scientists get hold of samples. The trouble is when you're trying to understand how these animals will cope with climate change and ocean acidification, you need them alive so you can do physiological and behavioural research on them. And nets are terrible at that because they bounce down the side of the nets and get damaged. And so we had 90% of the krill we would catch for research dying and not making it through their first molt once they came back to the aquarium. But what we've done is developed this uh, system known as a wet well inside the new icebreaker RSV Noina that allows us to literally suck the krill through the hull of the ship in four seconds straight into an aquarium system. So it's revolutionised the way we do our research. Now, it's not research that's new in the sense that we're working on krill. It's the other creatures that we're catching at the same time that is just so wonderful to have because these are some of the most fragile plankton and they're things that only ever came on board in pieces in the past. Mm. And it's just wonderful to have access to these now. So uh, it's, I know it's early days at the moment, but uh, how are the krill doing? Are you struggling keep, to keep them alive or is it pretty straightforward and easy? Uh, keeping krill alive is pretty straightforward. We've developed a unique laboratory in Kingston to do this and we've closed the life cycle and we can work on all 12 life stages. We've been able to show that these life stages are vulnerable to the changes that are coming in the Southern Ocean if we don't wind back our carbon dioxide emission. Uh, but we've not yet worked out how to keep some of these other exotic species, these things like comb jellies and pteropods. These are things we're going to have to learn how to hold in the laboratory so that we can understand how vulnerable their different life stages are to the changes that are coming in the Southern Ocean. Mm. Uh, Kingston, just on the southern fringes of Hobart there, I know, like I say, it's early days, but have, has any science fallen out of this already? Uh, yeah, I mean, the wonderful thing about the wet well is it doesn't require any ship time to operate it. So if, you, if the ship passes through a swarm of krill, which can be 200,000 tonnes of krill in a single school, like oh. a nautical mile wide. I mean, this is why whales swim down the coast of Australia each year to go krill fishing, because it's such a lucrative resource. But you don't have to stop the ship with the wet well. You just sail through it and the sample falls in through the side of the ship, literally into a tank. And then you can run them in a growth experiment and measure their growth rate. So we, from our last voyage, which we came back from about a month ago, we ran five growth experiments on Antarctic krill without using any ship time. That is unprecedented and that's just the tip of the iceberg for the sort of research a ship like Noina can achieve with over 140 separate science systems being commissioned at the moment and this is just one of them. Tip of the iceberg, very <laughs> very good when it comes to Antarctic work. Hey, uh, what, what's, what's the one bit of research you're hoping uh, will, will fall out of this that's going to be big and huge? Well, one really great thing we're hoping to do is now that we've secured a steady supply of krill in excellent condition, we're hoping to not just look at the effect of ocean acidification on the hatch rates of krill embryos, but to also look at the impact of temperature. Because we know that higher temperatures are a problem for hatching krill. They don't survive. We know that acidification is a problem, but we feel that when we bring these two pressures together, which is exactly what's happening in the Southern Ocean now, that the synergistic effect could be far amplified. And this is what we need to know. If we're trying to manage a sustainable fishery and conserve the ecosystem, it's essential we understand what's happening to this key species a species that represents one fortieth of all animal life on Earth in terms of biomass. Most people wouldn't realise just how significant the biomass of krill are. Um, and that's, of course, why we focus on krill.
takes a lot of those tiny little fellas to keep the biggest whales we've got alive. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck to you and the team on your very, very important work on those krill.